What's happening guys, Chris Minzy G here and today we are doing a, another Irish Community Showcase. Today I am joined with none other than Daniel Neville. How are you today Daniel? I'm good Chris, how are you doing? Uh, fantastic, I'm doing good. Uh, <clears throat> so in the, uh, the Irish Community you're quite a big judge. You go to lots of the YCSs, uh, judge all the time at Irish Nationals. Uh, do you believe the judge support for Irish events is good or do you think it could be improved? Uh, yeah, so I do judge roughly about eight premier events a year, as well as a few regionals. Um, in, in terms of judge support, uh, any TO that I've worked with has always been really fantastic for support. Um, I've mostly done stuff with War Chest, where I run events, or else with Black Cat in Kilkenny and Sandbox in Cork, and both of those are fantastic. Um, overall, uh, Konami uh, recommends an amount of support that shops should give to judges um, and when shops follow that I think that's sufficient yep fantastic uh, what spurs you personally to judge so many events uh, honestly it's about quality um, and partially traveling getting to see friends and such um, like players expect consistency when they're traveling to events especially when you get to the level of nationals and YCS's um, and it takes a while as a judge to actually get up to that level. Uh, when I started judging, what, about three, four years back at this stage, yeah. uh, I definitely had a very low understanding of the game. Um, so at this point, having done so much judging, it's the fact that by me judging events, I can help the newer judges to get to the stage where I am. And it means that players have confidence when they know that there are judges at the location that definitely know what's happening and keep up to date which formats. Yep, fantastic. What advice would you have for uh, people who want to get more into the judging program? Well, first off, just take the judge test. Like, even if you don't feel ready for it, just go online to yugiocard.com, um, sit the judge test, take as many attempts as you want to pass it, once you have passed it, you'll have to go through an email procedure that takes can take a month or two um, just to get set up on the judge form and stuff. But once you've passed the test, you should try and find a judge nearby um, who can kind of act as your judge mentor. Um, that's generally what I find is the best for judges, just having somebody that you know or else just somebody from the community who you can turn to and say, oh, like... This is a weird ruling. Like, when I first started judging, um, we were in the Shadal format, where Snatch Steel had gone to one. Yeah. Which led to the weird... Snatch Steel has weird interactions where if I... Um, if I Snatch Steel your monster and you Buck of Moon after Snatch Steel has already resolved, the monster stays on the player's field, which is different to other mind control effects and such. Yeah. So just having older judges who have been through multiple formats um, it is really helpful. We had a few issues recently that I can't quite remember, but um, it was definitely a case where rulings from the 2014 format were relevant in the current format. And so it helps having the people that have been actively playing and judging during those old formats to be able to just quickly say, yeah, that's how it works and this is why. Yep, fantastic. Uh, for the people who do not know, you are the current host of our Irish Open. Uh, I had Gary on on the second episode. He's the current Irish Open champion. He was talking a bit uh, more about it. Is there anything you want to add to that? Like, uh, tell the viewers at home what the Irish Open is? Yeah, so the Irish Open, I believe we're going into our ninth year now. So, basically, back when Upper Deck still controlled the Yu-Gi-Oh card game in Europe, um, Ireland actually lost nationals roughly nine years ago. Right. Uh, and so the Irish Open, from my knowledge, was set up to kind of replace nationals until we got something official back. Um, and then after the changeover to Konami, Ireland did get its own nationals back, but um, we kept the Open, and I think it's a really important event for us nationally. Uh, again, it gives us another big event to prepare for nationals with, 
and it's an event which other players will travel to from outside of Ireland due to the fact that it doesn't conflict with the one nationals per player in Europe. Yep. Um, yeah, like this year, I can't go into full details because I'm still reaching out to sponsors and such, but it's going to be really big. Um, hopefully. Hopefully going to be really big. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's really important that we have kind of cornerstone events in the Irish community, and I would honestly like to see more events throughout the year which at which we get kind of... 60 to 100 players because when you get to an event that size first off you're actually getting a full day of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Yep. Um, but also it reduces the kind of the weird little variance in in four and five round tournaments you can get weird things where even if you're playing with the best deck and you're playing your best um, if something goes wrong in one of the early rounds you're essentially knocked out of the tur- tournament Whereas in an eight-round event, if I lose in the first three rounds due to just, I don't know, like I present an illegal deck and then I break my hand in the second game or something, just something weird like that, uh, you're still able to recover from it. And I think that's very important for players. Um, And it's one of the issues with our regionals here is that when we're not getting very large player numbers, while the quality of play can still be quite high, um, it, it means that it's slightly less representative, I think, than something like YCS. Yep, that's a fair point. That brings us on to our next point of playing. Uh, if you check out the Curry Bros uh, Facebook, you see yourself having quite a lot of success uh, in the in the regional and local events. Uh, do you believe that a good judge makes a good player and vice versa? or So... There are multiple factors that I, I feel contribute to being a good player. Um, there are things like knowledge of the cards, and then understanding of interactions, and then even just the ability to count uh, both your deck and your opponents. In that, um, if I'm playing a spiral mirror, I need to know how many copies of each card they still have in deck at any point in time and kind of get reads and whatever like that. But um, judging definitely, if you judge well, it can help. And if you play well, it can help judging. Um, But if you're not paying attention to either, then obviously there's not going to be benefits. But understanding why your cards are interacting and just having that proper knowledge of the game, uh, I think is really important. And even if I were to stop judging, I would try and have the same level of understanding of cards when playing. Um, So I, I try to play actively so that I know what I'm talking about when I'm judging. Yep, fantastic. So would you highly recommend to uh, sort of the bigger players to uh, spend time judging and vice versa to the big judges? Would you recommend uh, spending a lot of time playing uh, competitively? Uh, I think it kind of, it speaks a lot to the players when they know that the judges are competent at playing the game. Um, Because when I started judging, there were judges that I felt were kind of just judging because they were hanging on to the game. They didn't really enjoy playing at that moment in time, uh, but they still wanted to enjoy the social aspect, which is great. Um, Like Yu-Gi-Oh! is, for me anyway, fundamentally a social game, um, and then after that, a competitive game. But I think for the higher judge roles, it's definitely very important that they're kind of actively familiar with the game uh, so that the kind of weird interactions of format they understand. Um, A judge who isn't actively playing can still judge effectively, but um, it it means like, for for example, Baguska, when it came out, you have a lot of weird interactions with it because it changes battle positions without starting a chain. Yeah. So a judge who wasn't familiar with the format could take longer and seem less sure about how that card worked. Um, and if that's if that's your head judge of your event, then that doesn't really look very good to the players if they're kind of humming and hawing over a card that's seen play in every single deck. Yep, fantastic. Um, 
what is your opinions on the game at the minute in terms of enjoyment of the game, uh, the healthiness of the game? Uh, what's your opinions on it? So, as you had mentioned, um, during the kind of LLDS format uh, into YCS Prague, uh, Volume 2, uh, I was playing quite actively. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I really enjoyed playing the format. Um, I didn't play the Pure Spiral format uh, because it, it just didn't really appeal to me. But coming up to the end of Zoo format, we had a very diverse format when Zoo finally got hit. The format was quite diverse. Um, True Draco was probably the strongest. Um, but you also had things like Paleo and stuff, which were quite interesting to play about, which I think there's a lot of diversity in formats. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I think Spiral at the moment is probably a bit too strong still. Yeah. But I, I think there's a lot of space to kind of come up with interesting ideas and there, there's space to catch opponents out by deck choices in this format, which there wasn't in the pure spiral format. Like at Prague, we saw everybody changing over to using cards like Mind Crush for going first against spiral to deal with evenly matched or super agent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really interesting and it kind of it favors players with kind of broad card pools who understand all the different kind of weird interactions that those cards can allow for because one day i could decide to play mind crushes and then another day i could decide to play trapples trapples are incredibly good if, if bottomless were at three it would probably see play against spirals because you bottomless and you get rid of their super agent and they can't really do much from there for that turn. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's interesting in that way, uh, in a way that I'm pretty sure the pure spiral format, you couldn't really achieve that because of the massive advantage they'd gain from kind of machine duping quick fix, and then you're like, oh, well, I guess I lose. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> so, fair. yeah, I, I think, like, if spiral were slightly weaker than this format, it would be incredibly interesting. But as it is, there's still a lot of space even just in the spiral decks, there's a lot of empty slots that you can kind of choose what you want to fill in. Yep. Which is good. Fantastic. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you're part of the team Curry Brews. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the team has been around for quite some time, but it's only uh, recently that uh, he's made a Facebook page, he has got sponsorship. Uh, is there any particular reason for the sudden upsurge of taking the team more seriously? Um... I'm not 100% familiar with exactly how the team is going about things, again, because I'm not playing very actively. Um, well, I'm not playing competitively very actively. Yeah. Um, I'm not super engaged with it. I, I think it's very important that the team made the decision. Uh, we had to make the decision, do we want to just remain casual or do we want to try and run the team as kind of a brand? Um, and because we went that way, that's why you're seeing us kind of getting YouTube active and getting Facebook active. Yeah. Um, I, I think definitely um, if you're going to approach things competitively like that, it's very important for the teams to have proper practice sessions um, because I think um, you can see a lot of examples in card gaming where when you have a team of eight people uh, that are just practicing on a frequent basis, uh, it, it really ups their level of play. Um, and again, with the idea of knowledge of the card pool in the game being important for for deck building, uh, by having multiple people pooling in knowledge, you can kind of, you generally should see better results. Yep, sounds good. For the Irish community um, specifically, how important do you believe that the existence of these teams are uh, for, say, the casual community, the competitive community, uh, and getting the Irish sort of community out there better? Do you believe they're really important? Or do you believe just, say, like a sole YouTuber would be able to do the same thing? I think our teams definitely need to make more work to integrate themselves fully into the community. Um, there are a lot of kind of 
there are a lot of teams in the art community technically, but um, generally it's just kind of a group of people that like to hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, And while that's fine, it definitely can make it seem kind of clicky to players on the outside. Yeah. Um, Which, again, it's a social game, so it's good that players are getting together and kind of enjoying the game. But I think we also need to be very careful that we aren't pushing new players out by them like coming into a locals and it's just like oh well there's just two teams here and they're just talking amongst themselves so it's definitely a case of like we need to be aware of the players around us and i think uh if the teams aren't actively benefiting the members then it's possibly considerable to just not have the team um but again it, it really depends how people want to take them um I think if we're looking to be more competitive, then having active teams is really good for the Irish community. But I I do think it's important that kind of, we act as teams for regionals and large events like that, but at locals, people are just kind of players because there's no advantage to going up to a locals and being like, oh wow, look, Team Creever has just won the entire locals. Um, It doesn't really benefit anybody. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Uh, about more about the Irish community. Um, reason why I'm doing this obviously is because the Irish players seem to get uh, maybe not recently, but before they seem to get many dislikes on their YouTube videos. Uh, people commenting on our regionals saying, "Oh, it doesn't count because they're a smaller community." Um, do you believe this is a fair comment or? Uh, is it kind of unjust because they haven't come over to see how competitive we are? I, I, so there definitely is value to what results we see from our regionals. And the players that win our regionals, we see them doing well again and again. So consistent players do get rewarded in the Irish scene. You do, however, see the issue that the Irish meta doesn't reflect the European meta or the US meta. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you, you can get away with just playing really random weird stuff here, um, generally in your side deck, but sometimes in main deck, uh, and you won't really get punished for it because at the average regional, you're going to encounter two to three players that are playing off meta decks, and then you're going to encounter two or three actually meta matches. Um, and because of that, I think the um, well, the quality of play is high. The actual data that we get from our regionals is probably less valuable than something from, say, a ten or twelve round event. Well, there's no twelve round events, but you know, it, it's it's unfortunate that our regionals aren't as effective for us for testing as they would be if we had, say, a hundred players for an event. Yep. Um, at the same time, again, we do see the same players consistently doing well at these events, so there clearly is a lot of skill behind it, but um, due to the smaller number of rounds and the, the fewer number of players, <laughs> the, the data just isn't as valuable as something like, say, Germany, where they have maybe like 100 to 200 players for a regional. Mm-hmm. For our, for our size, though, we seem to get a good return on uh, YCS and Euros victory. Like, we have uh, Dan McCourt, who topped Euros. We have Mungo recently at YCS's. Vlad recently at YCS's. Uh, but even still, on their deck profiles, there was a heavy amount of dislikes. Uh, do you know, have any chance why uh, that is? Because it's not the small events they're topping. It is the real high-caliber events. But yet still, there are the lots and lots of dislikes on the videos. I have honestly no idea. Um, kind of when I was starting to get into the Dublin scene, that was all happening. Um, so it, it kind of predates my super active interest in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely in terms of active players, um, from my count, we have roughly twice the amount of active players per capita at our nationals than any of the big European nationals. Mm-hmm. So, despite the fact that we only had 129 players at the nationals, um, like, statistically, based on number of people living in the country, we had a much higher turnout than pretty much anywhere in Europe. Yeah. So that's really, really good to see. 
Um, and even for our junior event, we had, I think, 16 players, oh, wow. which put us in like the top five biggest junior events in Europe, from what I'm aware. Mm-hmm. So clearly, like we have a really strong scene. I don't know why people decide to negatively react to our videos. Um, yeah, that's that's just kind of a meme that's been there since I was about. Uh, I don't know if there's any seriousness behind it. Yep, that's that's a fair point. Um, so when you're talking there about our um, our players per uh, population, do you believe that the Irish community is growing uh, in a good rate, or do you believe it's sort of evening off? Or what's your take on it? Um, I would like to see more growth, um, and I think that's kind of place where myself and other people organizing tournaments uh, need to kind of we need to step up and actually actively get more players in um growth growth seems to be good um but yeah i definitely think we could be doing more to get players in uh if we see the introduction of speed dueling soon i think that would be really helpful from konami um, because it's definitely an easier format for introducing people to the game. Um, assuming the uh, assuming it's not played as a competitive format, or if it is a competitive format, uh, certain cards are limited to prevent uh, OTK decks, because o- o- OTKs are not what you want in your introductory format. No, definitely not. <laughs> but I think definitely there's... Like, there are so many hidden Yu-Gi-Oh players uh, who just kind of buy a deck here and there. Um, and it's definitely a case of, as a community, we need to kind of tap into those and kind of help show them how to get to locals and then on to nationals or regionals. Yeah, that is true, because a couple of our contest winners, uh, I didn't have any mutual friends with them, so that was... It's very interesting seeing that they are sort of spread out across the island and yeah, if they can get the some events that would be absolutely yeah, fantastic. I'm, I mean, that's the thing. There, The thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! is from the competitive player's point of view, the only thing that is Yu-Gi-Oh! is locals. But there are so many hidden players that we just don't see because, again, they just buy a pack here and there or they're still in like secondary school or something. Um, and even like I'm seeing through the colleges we're seeing more people coming in and they'd be looking for Yu-Gi-Oh on campus instead of if you look at kind of five years ago the people that were entering college would be actively looking for magic so we see that kind of the Yu-Gi-Oh generation are starting to get older Um, well I mean (laughs) they've always been getting older but there's definitely a group that kind of from GX 5D era that are starting to get to the point where they'll be actively traveling to events mm-hmm. and being ready to kind of welcome those players in and help them kind of find their feet in the scene. I think it's really important. And also just being aware that, yeah, there are people that don't enjoy tournaments, just enjoy collecting the cards, um, but they're as valuable to our community as anybody else's. Yep. I, I agree. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel. That is all I've got to ask. Have you got anything else to add? Any shout-outs to give? I mean, shout-out to the whole Irish community. Like, you guys are all amazing. And, yeah, I mean, I've been active for about four years, and I wouldn't be active if it weren't for how amazing everybody is. So you're all really cool. Keep it up. And, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Daniel. If you have any questions for Daniel, please leave them in the comments. I will try asking them. Uh, He will get back to you. Uh, But for now, this is Chris from NCG signing out.